Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio. So today, we're going to be looking at the new Heatran. Coming out in the Pokemon trading card game in Sun and Moon 7A, Fun the Claps Park, over in Japan. And once again, the translation comes from Google Translate. Although once again, I have checked with David, because I don't want to be too presumptuous here. So... Heatran. Good news is it's got 140 HP, which means it is going to survive a hit from Zoroark, and it's going to do so with more than 10 HP remaining, which is pretty nice. Retreat cost of 4 is huge. Not really much you can do about that, unfortunately. It's just rubbish, especially with both Heavy Ball and Floatstone. Leaving the format... We are in a situation we haven't been in for a while where big retreat costs are just rubbish, to be honest with you. Weakness to water isn't rubbish. Water is not a great type at the moment. Best water Pokemon right now is Lapras, but it's one hit KOing you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And you are hitting weakness against both Metal Pokemon, think Duskmane Necrozma, and Grass Pokemon, think Golisopop. So you're hitting a much better weakness than you have. In terms of tricks for fire Pokemon, as I say far too often, we do have Lorantis promo. And as I say equally as often, it's never been proven to be any good whatsoever. Hashtag sad face. So, you know, that could be worse. I mean, in Expanded, you got all kinds of stuff like Blacksmith, which is quite lovely. In Standard, I mean, I don't know, Flint lets you search out some of your energy. That's quite nice. And I'm a ridiculous fan of the new Victini from this set. So maybe this could be a nice partner for the new Victini. But what does it do well? The first attack here. Fire double colorless 60 damage. Plus 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Or according to Google Translate. 30 damage to one bench Pokemon of your opponent. That's really quite accurate. The bench does not calculate weakness and resistance. Well, evidently the bench has better things to do. Or the bench is not very good at maths and we should be nicer to it. This is actually quite a nice little attack. I mean, for years we've all been using Night Spear on Darkrai. And that does 30 to the active, 30 to the bench. And might I remind you... Darkrai had the same attack cost. So this is like Night Spear, but you're generally hitting a better weakness, and it does an extra 30 to the active. What could possibly go wrong? And it's actually got a better attack cost because it can use double colorless energy, which Darkrai can't. Well, I mean, generally speaking, it's a good attack. There's no argument I don't think it's a good attack. The issue here is essentially... It's only got 140 HP. It's nice for a basic, but it's still low in the context of a whole bunch of these EXs and GXs. And it still costs a bunch of energy. And in a format where stuff like, you know, Ultra Necrozma is sitting there and using Malamar to accelerate energy. And then Boswell sitting there and it's either attacking for one energy or it's using B-String. We are potentially in a format here where... You're just not going to have quite as much time to accelerate energy. And let's not forget that although Darkrai's attack cost was a little bit more awkward, it did have Dark Patch. Also, I think I've been talking like Darkrai did 30 to the active, 30 to the bench. Obviously, it did 90 and 30. So this is actually a less powerful version of Night Spear. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. That was a little bit silly. But it's still a good attack. I mean, 60 damage, quite nice. You add a choice band on there, then you're up to 90 damage, which means you are 10 damage away from KOing a Dusk Main Necrozma with weakness. And once again, stop me if you've heard this one before. Forbidden Shrine comes in, puts one damage counter on each Pokemon EX and GX between turns. This will get the KO. Seriously, it seems like every video I'm running into a maths problem which can be solved by Forbidden Shrine. At this stage, it's starting to get just a little bit silly how many uses it has. And then you're doing 30 to the bench. Now, you're not hitting weakness and resistance on the bench, which kind of sucks. I don't think anything resists fire. You're just not hitting weakness. In the expanded format, you could use wide lens and then you'd get, be getting a one-hit KO on Beldum and Rowlet, for instance. Which would be kind of cool. But 30 extra damage is quite nice. 30 extra damage means you do it to a Dust Main Necrozma. And then when you hit it for 180, it gets KO'd. Or you do 30 to a Zoroark, bringing it down to 180. 
At which case, you can two-hit KO it using this. And remember that with your 140 HP, Zoroark will not be one-hit KOing you. So after you've done the 30 to the bench, you're then two-hit KOing. I mean, I suppose really a free hit carrying, but the first it doesn't really count because it's just kind of on the bench. 30 bench damage is nice, and we're losing Mr. Mime, remember? So it's going to be much more difficult to block bench damage from your opponent. Now we are having Sky Pillar coming out, which is a new stadium which will protect you, and we've still got Machoke, but Machoke's a stage one. And you can always use Field Blower to get rid of Sky Pillar before you actually did the attack. We don't have anything really reliable like Mr. Mime to stop this bench damage happening, and that's actually kind of cool. And it's not like we don't have options for getting the energy on here. It's a non-EX, non-GX. So you can use counter energy if you're behind on prizes. You can use counter gain if you're behind on prizes, which brings it down to a fire colorless cost, i.e. counter gain and counter energy will pay it if you're behind on prizes. You can use double colorless energy, as we mentioned before. You've got Moltres coming out. Weirdly, I've mentioned that in both videos today, which is a little bit strange. I did not think I would be going to, which can accelerate a bit of energy. You've got the new Macargo coming out, Macargo GX, whereby you discard the top card of your deck once per turn, and if it's a basic energy, you attach it. That's going to work nicely in fire decks like this. I mean, we have got Kiawe, but there are better Kiawe targets. Ho-Oh, for instance. Ho-Oh is a much better use of Kiawe. So yes, Kiawe is a technical possibility, but don't get too excited. It's not a bad little attack. And then we get to the second attack. Fire, fire, colorless, colorless, 150 damage. Discard the top five cards of your deck. Or as Google Translate puts it, trash five pieces of your deck from the top. Which again, as far as I'm concerned, is spot on. I think that's pretty good going. So, you know, good job, Google Translate. As for Heatran, it's expensive. It's really expensive. And look, there are plenty, plenty of ways that we can work around this. Like I said, double colorless energy, counter energy, counter gain, Moltres, Kiawe, Macargo. There are plenty of ways to accelerate energy to fire decks at the moment. But... What really worries me here is, if we put four energy onto a fire Pokemon, it could be a Ho-Oh, which has 50 more HP. Now, it also gives up two prizes, so there's a reason to go Heatran. But it's got 50 more HP, and it does 30 more damage. And that is a problem for Heatran, because Ho-Oh's basically muscling in, going, Out the way, boy, I got this. Now, in terms of the damage, you're doing 150, you had a choice band, it goes up to 180. So stuff like Tapu Lele is going down. But would you believe it, you are 10 damage short of something like a Buzzwall. So in comes Forbidden Shrine, also Ultra Necrozma. And it's just, it's weird at this point, ladies and gentlemen. Every video, every video, I'm sitting here working through the mass with you lovely ladies and gentlemen. And we're 10 damage short on an EX or a GX. And in comes Forbidden Shrine. I really do think it's going to see a lot of play. So this is quite nice. It's a bit of a shame you don't get to do the, you know, 110 to take out a Zoroark. Now, to be fair, Lorantis Prism Star will do it, but that's a bit awkward. And in Expanded, you've got Volcanian EX and it's Steam Up, which will get you there. But in Standard, we don't have great options for multiplying fire damage at the moment. It all just remains a little bit rubbish. And it's a nice attack. It's just four energy, and even then you've got to use a choice band and a forbidden shrine. That's a bit of a pain. Now, as for discarding the top five cards of your deck, I mean, it's a blind discard, so you could end up trashing a lot of stuff you don't want to, which could suck. But having said that, and this is what immediately sprang to my mind here, that Hippowden, the Pokemon which I showed you it did quite well in Japan there the other day, and by Hippowden, I mean Hippopotas, which I, I actually pronounced correctly for once, which does not happen often. 50 damage, if there are three or fewer cards in your deck, it does 180. So if you really want to be using Hippopowden, you can actually use this to start discarding cards from your deck. I don't think you should. They use different basic energy, and Hippopowden can use other things. But it does remain a possibility. It's a super awkward combo. But it's one that sprang to mind, and I thought it was worth having a gander at. So I did.
Overall, I'm going to be giving Heatran between two and three Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. It's not a great card, but it is a card that's got a little bit of potential. You've got plenty of ways to get the energy on there, and it can be a nice little non-GX Pokemon. But then again, we've got a few of them for fire at the moment, so arguably it's not the most needed thing. Hey-ho. Tell me what you think, though. Do you think it's better than I've made out? Do you think it's truly terrible? If only there was a comment section. Oh, wait. There totally is. So go down there. Go nuts, but be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.